This is a problem which we would call the method of initial rates. And we looked at a couple of examples of these in lecture. But now here's an extra problem to take a look at. This is taken from the end of chapter problems in your textbook. This is problem number 1480. The following data were collected for the reaction between hydrogen and nitric oxide at 700 degrees Celsius. The chemical equation is shown 2H2 gas plus 2NO gas gives you 2H2O gas plus N2 gas. Three experiments are shown. Each experiment has an initial concentration of both reactants, H2 and NO, along with the associated initial rate. This is the rate of the reaction at the beginning. It says in the question to determine the order of the reaction and then to calculate the rate constant. So let's take a look at this particular problem. For any reaction, the rate depends on a rate constant, K, times the concentration of the first reactant, which in this case is H2, raised to some power x, multiplied by the concentration of NO, that's the second reactant, raised to some power which we'll call y. Our goal in this problem is to figure out the value of x, the value of y. Each of those values is called an order. So the order of H2 is x, and the order of NO is y. The overall order would be x plus y. We also, in part b, want to calculate the rate constant, that's k. So once we figure out what x and y are, we can go back and figure out what k is. Now, in the lecture, what I said to do was to pick two of the experiments in which one of the experiments, or one of the reactants, I should say, is changing concentrations but the other reactants, other reactant is not. So for example, if we look at experiment one and two, in experiment one, the concentration of H2 is 0 0.01. In experiment two, it's 0 0.005. So the concentration of H2 has changed. But the concentration of NO doesn't change in those two experiments. It's 0 0.025 in both cases. So those are two good experiments to compare. Now what I recommend doing is taking the ratio of the initial rate of the faster one. So the faster one is experiment one because the initial rate is 2.4 times 10 to the minus six. The slower experiment, the slower rate, is experiment two, 1.2 times 10 to the minus six. So our first step is we're gonna do the rate of experiment two, which I'll write, I'm sorry, experiment one, which I'll write as R1. And then we're going to divide that by the rate for experiment two. So again, we're picking those two because one of the reactants is changing concentration, but the other one is not. So we're dividing the rates, the initial rates. So rate one is 2.4 times 10 to the minus six. And then for experiment two, 1.2 times 10 to the negative six. Now notice there are units for the initial rate. Each rate has units of molarity per second, but since we're taking the ratio of those two rates, the molarity per second is gonna divide out. They will cancel. The ratio here, well, 10 to the minus six divided by 10 to the minus six is just one and then 2.4 divided by 1.2 is simply two. So what that tells us is that rate one is twice as fast as rate two. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the rate law that we have here 
the one that we already wrote. And we're going to do the same ratio. We're going to take R1 over R2. So we're going to take K times the concentration of H2 to the X times the concentration of NO to the Y for experiment 1. And we're going to put in the numbers that we have. And then we're going to divide that by K times the concentration of H2 to the X times the concentration of NO to the Y for experiment 2. Okay, So R1 over R2. So that would be K times, I'm going to use parentheses here, for experiment 1 it's 0 .10, 0 0.10. Zero, 010 zero. and the units are molar and that's to the x times 0 0.025 molar and that's to the y and then I'm going to divide that by the rate law. This is called the rate law. I'm going to divide that by the rate law for experiment 2. Just like I did for the rates, rate 1 over rate 2, we're going to do the rate law for experiment 1 divided by the rate law for experiment 2. So K times 0 0.0050 molar to the X times 0 0.025 molar to the y. Okay. Now, y is going to be the same in the numerator as it is in the denominator. y is going to be the same for this reaction. So 0 0.025 molar to the y divided by 0 0.025 molar to the y, that's going to be 1. So they cancel. k divided by k, that's going to cancel. So now we have 0 0.010 molar to the x divided by 0 0.0050 molar to the x. So we can simplify this. 0 0.010 molar to the x divided by 0 0.005 molar to the x. Now here's the trick. That rate law is equal to the rate. So we've already done the ratio of rate 1 over rate 2, and we found that that's 2. So that means the rate law for experiment 1 divided by the rate law for experiment 2 has also got to be equal to 2. It has to equal that because the rate law is equal to the rate. So the ratios have to equal the same ratio. So that ratio equals 2. Now what we can do is we can simplify this. If we have two, a number raised to some exponent, in this case the exponent is x, divided by another number raised to the same exponent, x, we can simplify that and put the two numbers in the parentheses and then raise that ratio to x. Again, you can check this if you want, and we're going to set that equal to 2. So now, 0 0.010 over 0 0.0050, that's 2. This ratio here in the parentheses is just 2. So 2 to the x is equal to 2. So look, what I recommend, as I did in lecture, is that you merely um, just try trial solutions. x is going to be either 0, 1, or 2. It's not going to be 1.3 or 7.8. It's going to be 0, 1, or 2. So just try each one. 2 to the 0 is 1. That's not equal to 2. 2 to the 1 is equal to 2. So that means x must be 1. So 2 to the 1 equals 2. So that means that x must be equal to 1. And so now we've figured out one of the exponents. Right? One of the exponents, we have it now. Let me bring this up here. And let's see if we can erase this x. And put a 1 in here. How does that look? We got one now.
We got one of the exponents. Now let's work on the other exponent. We're going to work on y. Okay, so now what we want to do, right there what we saw was we looked at how H2 changed concentration but NO didn't. We now want to look for what NO is changing concentrations, but H2 is not. So let's take a look. Let's look at experiment 2 and 3. In experiment 2 and 3, NO is changing concentration. In experiment 2, it's 0 0.025. Experiment 3, it's 0 0.0125. But it's also changing. H2 is also changing. We don't want that. We don't want where they're both are changing. We just want where only the NO is changing. So where, where, where could we see that? Well, let's, let's take 1 and 3. In experiment 1, NO is 0 0.025. In experiment 3, it's 0 0.0125, so it's changing. H2 is the same in experiments 1 and 3, 0 0.01, so they're the same. So that's what we want. We want 1 and 3. Again, you want to do the one that has the larger rate over the one that has the smaller rate, just to make the arithmetic easier, or at least more uh, obvious. So we're going to take experiments 1 and 3, because NO is changing, but H2 is not. So I'm going to do just like we did before. We're going to take R1 over R3. Okay, so first step is to do the, the initial rates. 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6. Divided by... 0 0.60 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, that's pretty simple. The 10 to the minus 6 cancel. 2.4 over 0 0.60 is 4. So that tells us that rate 1 is 4 times as fast as rate 3. Now we're going to do the same thing we did with x to find y. We're going to take the ratio of the rate laws. So we're going to take the rate law for experiment 1 divided by the rate law for experiment 3. So this is going to be k times, so for experiment 1, 0 0.010. 0. Raised to the x times 0. 0.025. raised to the y. Then you divide that by the rate law for experiment 3. Now the numbers are 0 0.010 for H2 and 0 0.0125 for NO. So K times 0 0.010 to the x, 0 0.0125 raised to the power of y. Now we cancel everything that we can. k divided by k is 1. 0 0.010 divided by 0 0.010 to the x. Each of them are identical, so that's 1. So now you have 0 0.0250 to the y divided by 0 0.025 or 125 to the y. So I'm going to simplify that and skip a little step than we did before. I'm going to just write directly that ratio. 0 0.025 molar 0 0.0125 molar to the y. That ratio, you know, 25 over 12 and a half is 2. So this is 2 to the y. That, again, coming back, that's got to be equal to the ratio. The ratio of the rate laws has to equal the ratio of the rates. So R1 over R3, the rates, that's got to equal the ratio of the rate laws, which we just figured out is 2 to the y. So 2 to the y equals 4. Now again, we try our trial solutions. 0, 2 to the 0 is 1. 1, 2 to the 1 is 2. 2, 2 to the second power is 2 squared. That's 4. So that tells us that y must be equal to 2 squared. It's squared is what we're looking at. So now we have the form of the rate law. I'm going to come back. I'm going to erase y. And I'm going to go ahead and write in that that's a 2. 
So now, here's what we can say about this reaction. The rate depends more strongly on the concentration of NO, nitric oxide, than it does on H2, hydrogen. What I mean by that is that if you change the concentration of NO, that changes the rate by the change in concentration squared. As opposed to changing the concentration of H2, that's only going to change the rate by the change in concentration to the first power. It's a bigger change when you square something than it is when you raise it to the first. So, overall, this is a third order reaction. H2 has order 1, NO has an order of 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, so overall this is a third order reaction. Okay, I'm going to write that over here. Third order reaction overall. Okay? Last step. It says in here in part B to calculate the rate constant. It's implicit when we calculate the rate constant that we also figure out what the units are. So let's go through and try that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick one of the experiments to do this calculation. You could do any of the three experiments, or you could do them all and calculate an average rate constant. You would calculate the rate constant for each experiment, add them up, and then divide by three to get the average rate constant. I am just going to do one of them right here. It turns out the way the numbers were chosen for this experiment, you would get the same value of K whichever experiment you pick. So let's take a look at it. Here's how we're going to go about it. We now know the form of the rate law for this reaction. The form of the rate law is that the rate is equal to K, the rate constant, times the concentration of H2 to the first power, times the concentration of NO to the second power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange that equation. I'm going to solve for k. I'm going to isolate k. I'm going to do that by dividing both sides by the concentration of H2 and dividing both sides by the concentration of NO squared, and that will give us the rate constant. So k is equal to the rate R divided by the concentration of H2 to the first power. Now remember, if something's to the first power, you don't have to put anything there. Times the concentration of nitric oxide to the second power. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put in numbers and units. So let's um, make a little room here. I'm going to pick experiment one. Experiment one is the initial rate is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6 molarity per second. So 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6 molarity per second. And then we're going to divide that by, I'm doing experiment 1, so 0 0.010 molar. That would be H2. And then we're also going to divide it by 0 0.025 molar. But keep in mind, the form of the equation is NO squared. So we've got to square that. Okay. Now it's just an issue of calculating this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and calculate what the denominator would be. So this is going to be, the numerator, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6 molarity per second. And then we're going to take 0.01, and we're going to multiply that by 0.025, but we've got to square the 0.025. So 0.01 times 0.025 squared and you get a very small number now. It's 6.25 times 10 to the minus 6. 6.25 times 10 to the minus 6. 
times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, now, what are the units in the denominator? We have molarity times molarity squared, so that's molarity cubed, right? Molarity to the third power. Okay, so what's nice about that particular ratio is that 10 to the minus 6 cancels. Right. So now it's simplified. It's 2.4 divided by 6.25. And that ratio is 0.384. I'm just going to round that as 0.38. So we have the numerical value, 0 0.38. Sorry, that point a little bit better there. Now... What about units? The units are not obvious here. Um, it's molarity per second times molarity cubed. See, the seconds is in the denominator. The molarity cubed is also in the denominator, so those get bundled in together. So what we can do is we can cancel one of these molarities, one here and then make that a 2. If you don't have any units in the numerator, you can just write that as a 1. So this could be 1 over seconds times molarity squared. And there's our units right there. Now, just coming over here to the left, I'm going to write it using the notation that if something is, if a unit is in the denominator, you write it in the numerator as to, to a negative power. So k could also be written as 0.38. And then just in terms of the form, it's usually written molarity first. So molarity minus 2 seconds minus 1. Very awkward units for k, right? But that's what happens in kinetics. When you have an order that's greater than 1, this is third, this is third order, it's greater than first order, you end up with some funky units here. So this would be interpreted as 0 0.38 per molar squared per second. Okay, so that means like the molarity squared is changing and it's changing over time. So it's not, it's not obvious how you would interpret those units, but that's what they work out to be. So there's our value of k. What that means is we have gone ahead and we have completed this problem. We figured out what the overall reaction order was, third order. We figured out that the form of the rate law is k times h2 to the first power times no to the second power. If we knew concentrations now, we could calculate the rate. So for example, if I made up a concentration, 0 0.015 for H2, 0 0.035 for NO. We could punch those numbers into the rate law and use the known value of the rate constant, 0.38, and predict what the rate would be. We just punch the numbers right into the equation, right into the rate law, and we would have our rate. So there you go. That pretty much wraps up this type of problem. This is called the method of initial rates. And this is covered in section two of, uh, your, of chapter 14 of the textbook. And this is a type of problem you want to practice. So here you go.